Hey guys, in this video we're going to look at how do we deal with external assets in Unity. So in the previous one we've seen that uh, we're only dealing with uh, game objects that we would create. So things like the cube, or a sphere, a camera, a light. But what if we want to have images, we have images on our computer, we have images on, our, on, on the internet that we want to import and display inside Unity. And it's not just going to be about images. It's going to start with um, images and see what the difference is between a sprite and a texture. But also, I'm porting sounds. How do we deal with audio sources, audio listeners, and three-dimensional audio, which is a big part of Unity. Um, and then finally, we're going to conclude with uh, 3D models importing and mapping materials onto 3D models. And at the end, we'll see what uh, the asset store and the package manager can um, help us, how the, the asset store and the package manager can help us in importing additional assets. So let's get started. I'm going to start by opening the Unity Hub. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to call it Day 2 Assets. I'm going to... Okay, so our project is loaded, and what we're going to focus on mostly, because we're talking about assets in this video, we're going to focus at the bottom tab, the project tab, where our, all, all our assets live. So the easiest way to import an asset is to drag and drop it. So I'm going to go ahead and start with images, I'm going to go to my finder, um, downloads, I have one called a picture of Algiers. And I've just dragged and dropped it. And it looks great. It looks like the picture is here. You can see it in the import settings. Um, and now say I would like to uh, display it in my world. So I'm going to drag and drop it into the world. But it doesn't quite work. It doesn't work because by default, when we import images, they're set as textures, and textures need to exist on top of a 3D object. So for instance, we could create a new 3D object, let's say create a plane, and then drag our texture onto our plane. And you see how now the image is mapped onto a 3D model. So I'm going to click the Rotate tool at the top and rotate it a little bit. Um, actually, if I want to look at it through the camera, let's see. Yeah, don't see anything. Let's rotate it completely like this and then rotate it like this. Now the camera should see it. Yeah, OK. Put this at 90, 0, minus 180. Okay, and let's move this a little bit higher, actually. Yeah, sweet. We have our picture of Alters um, in the middle of our um, of our viewport in the game view. So these are how textures um, wrap around objects. For instance, we could also have a game object, like a cube, move the cube around, and then put the texture onto the cube. And we would see now that it's wrapped all over the cube itself, right? In all those directions. So using textures might be useful sometimes, and they might not be that useful other times. For instance, if I want to start deforming the plane using the scale tool, um, which axis? Let's do this axis. And we might end up with some weird artifacts, and we're not quite sure that like the default size of our plane is actually the default size of our um, of our image. Um, so wrapping, if you just want to display an image, wrapping this texture onto a plane is not the best way to go about it. So I'm going to right click and delete the plane for now. I'm going to keep the cube to show how the texture wraps, and then we're going to import another image, and we're going to set it as a different uh, type, as a sprite. Again, I drag and drop it, and I have this album cover from um, 
an artist. And in the import settings, I'm going to change the import settings and I'm going to say it's not a texture, it's a sprite. Click on sprite and then at the bottom, click on apply. And now we see we have this sort of arrow that shows up in our assets folder at the bottom. Um, and now I can actually move this image around as if it was a game object. And whenever um, I've set it up, I'm just going to put this name is a little bit easier. Whenever I set it up, I can adapt it as um, a 3D object, I can manipulate it easily as a 3D object without thinking of two different things. It's not a 3D object with the texture mapped onto it, it's just my image. So if you want to display images that are sort of like floating in the world, um, the best way to do so is through sprites. Let's move it back a little bit this way. Oops. Cool. So now we have one image that's a te texture and one image that's a sprite. These are the two main ways that we can deal with images in Unity. Other more advanced ones we can look in further. Look, we could look into into further videos. Okay, so now we have sprite versus textures. Another kind of media asset are sounds. And sounds work kind of similarly um, in how you import them. It is how you actually play them back that is a little bit different. So let's start by importing the sound. I'm going to go back to my finder. Um, I'm going to find a track. I'm going to import this track. I'm dragging and dropping. Unity takes a little bit to load. And then we have our track here. And we can play it back. I click here on the play button to play it back. And it plays the same way. Okay, how do I actually play it back in the scene now? In order for um, sound objects and audio files to be played, we need two things. We need an audio source and an audio listener. Audio source is going to be the playback, and the listener is going to be the ears. Where are the actual ears? By default, the ears are in the main camera. So if you go to the main camera game object, you see it has a transform component, it has a camera component, and it has an audio listener. This is what allows us to hear anything that happens in the scene. Once that we have that, now we need to add um, an audio source component somewhere. So we could add it on a new um, game object, or we could also add it on, say, our cube. So on our cube, we're going to say add component, audio source, click on audio source, and now we have, I'm going to click those so we see it a little better, we have a bunch of settings. We have which clip are we playing, what is the output, is it muted, does it play right when we start, does it loop, and so on and so forth. To check that it works, I'm just going to start by dragging my audio clip into here. Now I play it, and the sound plays automatically because we have the setting play on awake. Now that we have the simple playback, one thing that Unity is, um, is good at is doing spatialization. It is a 3D engine, it is a physics engine, it's about moving around and so the sound should also be able to move around. So one thing I'm going to uh, draw your attention to is the setting Spatial Blend here. And so Spatial Blend can be completely 2D or completely 3D. Completely 2D means that it's kind of a soundtrack. So it's always playing wherever you are in the scene. You might be very far away from the object that is actually playing back the song or playing back the audio. Wherever you are, you will heal the audio at maximum volume. If we set it as completely 3D, then we need to be close 
to the, uh, to the object that's playing it back in order to actually hear it. And I can control that in the minimum distance and maximum distance. So if I say the maximum distance for the audio to play is actually 5, you see that there's this second blue sphere that appeared around. Right? You see like there's a blue sphere outside, there's a blue sphere, a blue sphere inside. The blue sphere inside is the minimum distance, and then the blue sphere outside is the maximum distance. If we're outside of that external blue sphere, we won't hear anything. And right now, our camera is indeed outside of that, uh, that blue sphere. So I'm going to click play. And we still hear something. We still hear something because um, we haven't specifically set um, that at the end of the blue sphere, the, sh the volume should be zero. And we can control that in this sort of graph that we see here in the 3D sound settings on the cube object and the audio source. And I'm just going to say when we reach 5, let's reach 0. Okay, so I'm going to move these around and th this, red, this red curve is basically just a volume curve. Um, how loud should be the audio depending on how far you are? Are you like 5 units away, 4 units away, 3 units away, and so on. I play it back again and now I don't hear anything. I don't hear anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my camera on the z-axis. I'm going to get closer and closer to the cube. So I take z, I get closer. And now I hear the sound again. The closer I come, the more I hear it. And keep on going. It disappears again. And we're past the five unit mark. And we don't hear anything. Hear it again. And don't hear it anymore. Again, this sound is spatialized because it uses 3D, a spatial, a 3D spatial blend here. If I set this back to 2D, all of those uh, spatial settings do not matter anymore. And I hear the sound as if I was in sort of a cinema theater room. So that is for audio. One last thing you might be want to, want, um, wanting to look into is um, the load types. Whether it is decompress on load, compressed in memory, or streaming. Um, essentially that depends on the, the size of your audio file. If it's just a short sound effect, then you might want it to be um, decompressed on load because when you load the application, you decompress all the other files because they're all maybe one megabyte maximum. Um, if you have a soundtrack that's two hours long and that's about like 200 megabytes, then you want to stream it because you don't want to decompress everything when you load, otherwise your app will have to, your app will have to unzip 200 megabytes of data whenever you click play. Okay. Now that we've looked at into sounds, we're going to look at the last type of um, assets, which are 3D models. 3D models are um, can be found on the internet. They can be uh, created in uh, 3D modeling software. What's interesting for us is that um, it, it sort of highlights the relationship between the 3D model and materials. That's going to allow us to talk about materials. So first, I'm going to import a 3D model. Um, I'm going to show you a different way, actually. We're not going to do this this time. We're going to go into Unity, and we're going to say File, or we're going to say Assets, Import New, new Asset. I'm going to go into my Downloads, Date Modifying. I have this building.obj file here. I'm going to import it. <clears throat> and now I see in my inspector that I have a 3D model. I drag and drop it. And now here's our first problem. I scroll out, I scroll out, I scroll out. You see the difference in scale. The issue is that Unity's coordinate system and most 3D modeling software's coordinate systems don't quite match every time. Um, so when you model something in, let's say, Maya, Rhino, Blender, um, you might think that it looks at a decent size, 
and you might, you might import into Unity and you might realize that like, your origin point is not the same origin point, the scale is way out. And so we need to like, be aware of this whenever we use 3D models. Um, and and here's, a, here's a trick on how to, um, to deal with it. One trick is by using parenting in game objects. So we're going to add actually an empty game object, which has nothing, and we're going to put our building inside that game object. Okay, so now the position of the building is going to be relative to the position of the, game, of the parent game object, which I'm going to call parent building. What this allows us to do is to say, I want the parent building to be at 0, 0, 0, and to have a scale of 1, 1, 1. So it looks like a normal game object, and we can think of it in, in, in Unity terms. And then inside the building itself, um, I'm going to change its position so that it matches the 0, 0, 0, which should be where we see all our tiny objects here. Um, so I'm going to bring it down a little bit, and then we're going to bring it to the right, and we're going to scale it way down. So I'm going to scale it to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Let's see, where are our other objects? Our cube is over there. So we need to move our building a little bit more this way. It's a little bit too low. And if we want to, if we start having big scenes and we want to zoom um, to a particular object, we can double click on it on the hierarchy on the left. So I'm going to double click on the cube, makes me, makes me zoom to the cube, and I see where the building is in relationship. So I'm going to move it. I'm going to move this again. Again, I'm moving the building itself. I'm not moving the parent building. The parent building stays at zero, zero, zero with scale one, one, one. This is just sort of a setup. Uh, process. Can move this a little bit more around. Are we getting there? Are we yeah. Now we're getting close to the cube. Okay. So now we're at the same location, still a little bit big. So maybe I set it to 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. And I'm going to move this again a little bit further so that we reach. building again, and now it looks a little bit more decent. Cool, and if I look at my camera, I'm inside the building. The point of doing all of these, the point of uh, doing the parent building and then a child building and modifying only the child is that now, once we know, okay, this should be at zero, 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 it should be kind of like the expected scale, we can only modify the parent building without having to care about what's going on inside. So now I can move this around. I can say, actually, I want it to be a little bit um, um, elongated on the y-axis, so I say 1.5, makes it a little bit um, higher. And it doesn't need to be any of those weird values that we end up with, such as like x equals 69, y equals uh, minus 22, z 227. We can just care about the parent building anymore. Um, and that's the only thing we need to think about. Cool. We have our building. It might look very beautiful and abstract with just this sort of like beige material, but we might want to, um, to include more elaborate materials. And to include more elaborate materials, either you can create them in Photoshop, um, or we can use what, uh, what is called the Asset Store. And the Asset Store is sort of the Unity marketplace uh, where users, um, Unity users, can upload whatever they want and either sell them or give them away for free on the platform. And so to do that, we need to go to a website first. So I'm going to open up Firefox. I'm on the Unity Asset Store here. I'm logged in with my free Unity account. And I'm going to look for concrete texture. Search for this. And I'm going to sort by um, price so that we get the free ones first. Um, here's a concrete plaster texture. Looks good enough. 
old yellow concrete. Maybe we do the old yellow concrete. I'm gonna open this guy and it shows me all the different um, versions of the texture. That looks a little bit dirty but kind of nice. Um, we have a um, 2048 by 48 texture. We can see if we download this, what are we gonna get? We're gonna get six files with a script, some demo scene, um, and some different kinds of uh, uh, concrete textures. That looks good. So I'm gonna add it to my assets. And then I'm gonna open it in Unity. And Unity is going to load this tab, the Package Manager tab. And the Package Manager is a new tab that you can also access by window, Package Manager, and this is where we can add packages, so like additional libraries, and we're going to get into it a little bit further down the semester. Um, things like VR, AR, um, different kinds of um, fonts possibilities. What I want to go to is my assets. So I go at the top here, my assets, and we have a couple of these, and we see the last one, bam, old yellow concrete. This is the one that I just got. I'm going to click download by clicking import. I see all the different files that I'm going to import. There's actually a demo scene. We can look at how it looks. Um, now we have this new folder at the bottom called free old yellow concrete. I'm going to go back to my scene view. And first of all, I'm going to check how it looks. So I'm going to open up another scene. That's a scene that um, the user who uploaded the yellow concrete um, designed for us. And he just has different kinds of um, objects. Uh, the cube, the sphere, a plane, um, to show us how it looks like in different perspectives. So that's all nice. I'm going to go back to our scene by going to Assets, Scenes, Sample scene, and now I'm going to add the texture. To add a texture, it's not just about um, dropping and dragging. We actually need to add a material. And this is what happened whenever we created our cube and we wrapped the texture, the algae's texture, around our cube. It created a materials um, folder with an actual material wrapped around. So let's do another one and let's do right click, create material. We could also do assets, create material. And I'm going to call it yellow concrete. Press enter. And there are different, um, there are different images that can be integrated into a material. And a material in general is just it's this thing that's responsible for taking an image and making it react to light um, whenever it's within a 3D world. So in the case of the cube, um, based on how I rotate the cube, it's going to react differently to light. If I make it go up or down, some of the sides become darker or brighter. That's what the material is responsible for. So in our yellow concrete material that we created, I'm going to add a main map, and so a main map is basically it's our um, um, the main image that we want. And if I click on the little square here or a little circle, I can select from my assets, and I have this main map here. I'm gonna click this one, and then I can see that they give us also like a bump map, so a height map. Oops, no, not a normal map. Let's do this one. The height map here. To give it a little bit more texture. Um, and there's the MGO, I'm not sure what the MGO is. Um, and right now, do we want it to be metallic? Can make it super shiny, and let's not make it too shiny. And very smooth, so it sort of um, reacts very smoothly to, to light. And it looks decent. 
So now I'm going to go back to our parent building, our building here. I'm going to open it, and I have the actual um, 3D model that's all selected. You see the orange outline. I'm going to go into Mesh Render, and the Mesh Render has a default material. I'm going to replace it with our yellow material. Drag it here, and now I have this crazy weird concrete texture. Actually, it looks kind of impressionistic, kind of nice. Um, for instance, if you wanted to have different materials on different parts, you would need um, previously to separate the 3D object in your uh, 3D modeling software, and then say the columns are just going to be gray, the floor is going to be um, yellow, and so on. Right now, I only have one object, so I can only have one material. So this concludes um, today's video. We looked at how we can import different assets, um, how do we use the asset store and the package manager to download assets from the Unity platform. We looked at how do we import and create materials for 3D models. We looked at how sounds work with an audio source and audio listener. How does audio 3D work or 3D audio work so that we can hear a sound better when we're close to it and we hear it less when we're further away. We looked at how images work sprites versus textures, sprites exist on their own, textures have to exist in the 3D model, and overall that wraps up in importing external assets and using them in Unity.